Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and X-Plane 11. For this flight I mean the P-51 Mustang by Skunk Crafts. This is a Payware P-51 and I'm flying from Seattle to Eugene which is a distance of about 203 nautical miles which is not long so we're probably going to deviate to take a look at Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens. And this is the plane, very shiny. Uh, I forgot the name of it now. Uh, Moonbeam McSwine. I thought that was funny. Uh, so that's a nice name, very shiny plane. There's a lot of nice deliveries for this one, uh, for the Skunk Crafts P-51. And I did test fly it as usual, and it's really hard for me to get it off the ground because it's all these high-powered tail draggers are tough. And I also I caught on fire. Uh, I think I know how to prevent that. Um, I wasn't uh, overdoing the throttle or anything, but I might need to adjust the RPMs and the mixture a little bit better. But we'll see. Maybe maybe I'll have problems this time too. But let's continue with the Apollo 13 audio. And... Let me, okay, pressing play. Let's see. Okay, looks like it's good. And, uh, you want that at work now? Okay, so with the caveat that this is going to okay. look awkward, uh, let us begin. Lots of wiggling okay, around. Okay, uh, uh, sure. that should be good enough. Oh, well, it, it could have been worse. Yeah, I'll tell you that right now. The, uh, I've already throttled down here. You can't really hear it from the engine because I haven't adjusted the RPM. Now I've adjusted the RPM. It seems like a fairly clear day out, but... We'll see. Hopefully it won't get in the way of us looking at the mountains. Let's see, Mount Rainier... Well, it's foggy enough that I can't see from here. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. Okay, let me get back into the cockpit and see. By Charlie and others, and what so we've got that you the coolant is very on the hot. Till you see no I mean, I don't know. Then wait Maybe it caught on fire for other things, because I don't think and, uh, anything I'm going to do is going to get the coolant that's any a, better that's than the that. Only way we can, uh, tell. Over. I'll go with 50 on the okay, math hole pressure and see how that does. Okay, and if, uh, if you can't attain that, well, of course, uh, just the best you can do. Uh, we'll have to give it a try. Maybe it won't be quite like the simulator. Right. Maybe a little more than that. Unlike the Spitfire, it doesn't have like a boost indicator, I don't think. Okay, Houston, uh, Aquarius. Go ahead, Aquarius. Okay, Vance, I've gone all the way uh, through your procedure, all the way down to Flex Best Zombie, but I'm not getting any main bus speed holding. And, uh, this I don't understand. Roger, uh... Wings aren't as shiny from inside the cockpit. No, well, no, actually they're pretty dull right now with the atmosphere the way it is. Yeah, it's pretty foggy. Okay, Jack, you read now? I don't know if we're gonna see the mountains very well. Okay, you faded out uh, due to noise in your orientation. Uh, if you close the power amp circuit breaker, uh, we can hear you better. Over. Oh, well, we can briefly see Mount Rainier there. Uh, has it really cleared up, or...? We need That's to get weather transitions when it uh, does its every 15-minute okay. reset of the weather. Okay, uh, that was a pretty out, uh, stark difference. So, uh, please go through that again. We understand you don't get anything. Okay, Vance, how are you reading now? Okay, we're hearing you better. Stand by one. Okay, Jack, uh, please repeat back now uh, 
your conversation. You were uh, cut out for uh, a while ago. Uh, I don't have any idea where we cut out, Vince. I just said that we had performed the procedure exactly as you say. We're down into the step critical portion to where I said flex that zombie. However, we're not getting any main bus B voltage reading. I can read bat bus B, Baker, at 36.5, bat Charlie at 37.0, but I have negative main bus B reading. Okay, stand by. Just try to trim it right a little bit. Okay, Jack, uh, there are two there's a switch and a circuit breaker. There's uh, late taps that we're over right now. Like but the city on the southern end uh, of it's called Bonnie Lake. Correction, just the switch, panel five. Uh, check your bus tie, main bus tie, bat BC on. That is verified on, I checked that. No, oh, at 55 okay. on the manifold pressure. Shouldn't be too bad. Jack, this is Houston, over. Right, go ahead, Ben. Okay, we're getting data from you, Jack, so uh, that much looks good. Uh, on panel five, uh, request verification that EPS sensor signal circuit breaker is main B. Well, I mean, I'm not thrilled with the coolant pressure, but okay, I don't see any way of reducing it any more than it is right now. Okay. Not pressure, temperature. If I said pressure. Okay, Mount Rainier. Okay, Jack, and we see your main bus B voltage at 28 and a half. Okay, you can see it. Good. Okay. Then. At least somebody can see their voltage. Okay, Ben. That circuit breaker is in. Copy. Okay, Jack, please repeat your cutting in. Okay, man. Okay, I, we just changed zombies here. I think if you're getting data from us, uh, that's the important thing. Let me go back up into the bedroom there and get the readings you wanted so we can get this stuff powered down. Is, is that okay? Uh, okay, we got by all means, uh, and select best Omni. Okay, Vince, uh, we'll go back up. We've got always now, and uh, we'll go back up and take the readings that you want. Okay, and select best Omni. I don't know about these straight edges in the midst of this forest area. Okay, I'm going back up into the bedroom, Ben. How do you read? Loud and clear. Lots of nice trees down there, but okay, I don't I'm know why there are the these we'll awkward the patches. And, uh, continue on with the procedure. Roger. Okay, Vance, uh, jumping up, buddy, Reed. Reading you loud and clear, Jim. Okay. And, uh, Houston, uh, I noticed in the AOT and through the uh, overhead uh, docking window that we are vetting again. Okay, Jim, understand the uh, service module is vetting. At the firm. I uh, don't seem to change much, adjusting the Q mixture. Uh, go ahead, Ethan. Uh, Jim, would you uh, holler into the bedroom and tell Jack that when he has his onboard readouts that uh, we wish he'd uh, back, use the back out procedure and shut down again uh, for the procedure we gave him. Roger, moving. 
Okay, as soon as he gets his onboard readout, to use the, uh, the power down procedure and shut down. Is that right? That's firm. Okay, Jack just, Jack just told me that he's through and he's going to go through the back of the Okay, well, I don't think okay. there's any point in me getting any closer. I'd have to climb and I don't want to. So, there we go, Mount Rainier. This is Apollo Control at 102 hours, 6 minutes. We got 7 minutes, 37 seconds worth of telemetry data on the uh, command and service module during this uh, power up of the command module powered up just enough to uh, enable us to get uh, telemetry signals and for the uh, flight controllers to take a quick uh, telemetry snapshot of the uh, command module. They appear to, uh, to like what they've seen. GMC reports uh, propulsion systems pressure and temperature. Uh, I think that mountain to the left is too far to the east to be Mount St. Helens. Uh, a little, a little bit choppy right now. Velocity 4,295 feet per second. I'm pretty sure it's that one in front of us. Uh, in the haze, you can barely see it. and expecting to go up, go down, go down. Okay, Jack, we got it. Thank you very much. Okay, how does the uh, telemetry look on our uh, on the whole Odyssey? It uh, doesn't look too cold. Looks pretty good. Okay, thank you very much. You bet. We're going to need you. How does it feel, Jack? I don't actually know which mountain that is. Rainier and Mount St. Helens get all the attention, but there's obviously a prominent peak over there. Well, I guess mountains of Washington State. Look up the internet.
Aquarius, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, Jim, two items. Well, the it's not module, uh, we wish to among the top that the four. Pyro battery selector was left in the main position. And uh, we're ready to have the power amp circuit breaker on panel 16 pulled uh, whenever you're ready. I mean, it's definitely south of. Okay, uh, fans, uh, Mount Rainier. Okay, so, I mean, that eliminates a lot of them. Okay, understand you're checking it. A lot of the taller peaks are further north. somebody else knows. All of the really tall peaks seem to be north of here. Maybe Gilbert Peak? I don't know. Anyway, this is Mount St. Helens over here at least. That's recognizable. Clearly, has blown its top and, and everything. Uh, see no indications of, uh, Actually, that other peak gives a good uh, counter example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good thing to check that they're not going steeper when they were already too steep. Very important. Uh, Jim, uh, the situation is that uh, at the moment we're a little bit shallow, and uh, retrograde mid course is going to put us more in the center of the corridor. Over. Okay, fine. I just want to make sure Fred had written down uh, some time ago that uh, that our angle now was about 71 and we were going to do a big course in 17 seconds and we prepared that we were going to shallow it out. I, uh, I think we're about the same line this time. Raj, uh, and I guess it follows, but uh, your perigee is a little bit high right now, too. So that will be bringing it back, back down, that is. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that's the important thing. Uh, one other question, Jim. Uh, our readings down here say your limb. So, Mount St. Helens, uh, and now we are on to Portland. Just keeping an eye on okay. things. Cabin look at Mount St. Helens. Is that uh, 
Uh, Jim, that's affirmed that uh, pad is still valid. And that is assuming no mid course 7 here at 105 miles. That's affirmed. Of course, Houston. Go ahead. Jim, we're setting up your burn for 105.30, and uh, we'll be working up uh, pad, et cetera, based on that time over. Uh, Roger, the time will be 105.30. And uh, additional point, I guess this one's for Jack. Uh, do we have any idea why we couldn't read the main bus B uh, voltage? a while back when uh, first he didn't get it, and then later he did. Yeah, I think we have a reason that standby. It appears, uh, Van, that the battery charge circuit breaker, which appeared to be the end, uh, was an end. Uh, Fred Fulham reset it, and then he started getting reset. Uh, Roger, uh, which circuit breaker was that? It was, it was the battery charge circuit breaker uh, that uh, Roger revolved, but we haven't, I don't know the exact name for it yet. Okay, I uh, understand. My name is Battery Charger, Bat B Charge, Jack Dolby. Okay, Battery Charger, Bat B Charge. Fresh Houston. Go ahead. Uh, have you opened your, just uh, curiosity, have you opened your uh, food locker just in half of the limp data file? Yeah, it's been open. Okay, just checking, thanks. And the USB all comes through. Good. bit further this way obviously to go to Mount Rainier Mount St. Helens I deviated from I-5 I'm trying to get back on course I think I see Portland over there to the right pretty sure that's Portland I mean I've got a moving map and everything we have some uh, CSM temperatures here for you. Might be of interest. Uh, you ready to copy? Roger, go ahead. Okay, your quad package temperatures uh, ranged from 85 degrees to 44 degrees. Your CM RCS injectors range from 44 degrees to 21. And your heat shield Let's monitor things. is uh, well above its lower limits uh, in all the various uh, locations. Uh, temperatures appear to be cycling uh, based on sun angle and it's no sweat. They all look very good. Well, once again, I don't see anything uh, particularly good. wrong right now. Were you 
Negative, Jim. Okay. And uh, Houston, how do you read Aquarius? I'll read you loud and clear, Fred. How do you read? Okay, same one. A little Roger. bit laggy approaching we Portland here. Oh, I don't have that little plug in working. Some information pertaining to the burn. Are you ready to copy? Uh, stand by. Okay. Very nice day out. Could have probably done with a few clouds around the mountains, especially. But it's okay. Okay, go ahead, Ben. Okay, Fred. Uh, first of all, preparations uh, for this, starting with uh, contingency checklist page 24, we would recommend should start at uh, 104.30 GET. And uh, we'll be happy to receive any comments you have on that. Washington has some interestingly named peaks. Mount Terror. Uh, when you're in the Cutthroat Peak. Very dramatic. You see the sun at the very top of the AOT. Uh, Mount so Deception. Putting the cursor uh, when your cursor is set at zero. Uh, one thing to be aware of, though, that it'll slip right out of the AOT uh, very easily since it'll be very sensitive to uh, roll and yaw. And, and that's in D10 too, by the way. Next point, the burn is uh, very insensitive to burn time and uh, attitude. In other words, okay, uh, so sir, there is the city of Portland. It if there's any problem at all, and uh, attitude isn't too critical. So that brings us to the point that we only have one real burn rule. That is if <coughs> rate got any access gets to 10 degrees a second, that's the limit. Stop the burn. Next point. After you finish the burn, before you trim, request that you leave DITA address 470 up a while so we can take a look at it. And uh, let us holler when we've seen it, and then proceed on. Over. Portland International Airport behind us now. Again, we're headed okay, on to yeah, Eugene. Uh, you're saying, uh, you should start into the prep uh, in the contingency book uh, at about 104.30. And I'll uh, talk it over in a minute with Jim. And we'll Lots of bridges there. across this river. The, uh, I think I remember the, passing uh, right at the top of the and I through this at night and, and it looked pretty good. Uh, Jim and I had already been talking about that and uh, so that's the downtown area off of the main river. Columbia River, which forms the border between Washington and Oregon back there, and then there's this, I don't know what this offshoot, uh, Willamette River, Willamette River. All these bridges in the downtown area. That's right, Fred. And if you have any questions at all regarding the alignment, why, uh, please let us know. We'll be, be happy to answer them. Like uh, aligning on the earth, uh, as was described before. Uh, also, you should know that the pitch is the most critical attitude so far as errors are concerned. Burn, Looking good around here. As I said, it's still not very sensitive. And we're back following I-5. Yeah, the, and unfortunately, the way we're uh, looking out the window through the co-ops, uh, we can align uh, yaw and roll pretty well, but it's the uh, sun that has to get a pitch. All right, and a, and a correction on this DITA 470 thing. Uh, request that we let you give you a go before you trim. Over. 
Uh, Roger, we would like to see address 470 and give you a go before you trim. Over. Oh, okay. I, I see. Okay, after bird, uh, we'll leave 470 up a while and uh, wait for your word to uh, do the trim. That's correct. I was asleep. Okay, I've answered you then. Roger, go ahead. Okay, the, uh, the picture that uh, Jim gave me on uh, his view uh, through the coas uh, was with half the, uh, the uh, partial earth, the lift portion, uh, laying in the uh, top half of the coas with the uh, cup uh, laying right on the uh, YY line. So uh, the, uh, the whole dark part of the Earth would be at the uh, bottom part of the Earth, except a very thin crescent of the dark part to a line, uh, line above the uh, uh, uh -oh. line. Uh, so I, I muted myself okay, because uh, there was noise outside. Correct. We've got a problem. Um, once again, we've got fire in the cock uh, in front of us. Well, I've got an airfield there, so I'm going to use it. I don't know if I have air brakes. One is that uh, we don't expect hardly any misalignment uh, of your engine for the burn cell. We don't really expect any rates throughout the length of the burn, especially since it's at uh, very low thrust. Second point. Uh, request I don't know if I can land. Uh, it's a little bit fast. Uh, um, I'll try and full cold. That, if it, if it were go full around. Cold, that might I don't think I can slow down in time. Situation might bring the temperature up. Okay. I don't know why it catches on fire. I'll have to read the manual or something. Well, it's definitely not happy with me. Okay, the ladder was a good point. We hit it at uh, full hot. Very good. And uh, Roger on the. Uh, Roger on the too. Okay. Well, I don't know what airport this is. We'll find out later. Okay, uh, Vance, is the, uh, is the take uh, time going to be approximately uh, is it 105 or 105.30? It's uh, 105.30. Okay, your 104.30 time to start in uh, is... Uh, Sounds pretty good. Uh, it'll give us lots of time to get set up with the attitude business uh, in case we have any trouble uh, stopping PTC and getting there. And uh, uh, that'll give us a little time to uh, be sitting and waiting all set up. Okay, Fred. Good. Aquarius Houston, or? Oh, Fudge, where are you, Airfield? Hi, you calling, man? Uh, right, Fred. Oh, we I turned too much. Two drop, uh, in your water okay, well, let's keep going have around. Have you guys uh, had a drink recently, or uh, do you know any reason why it might have dropped over? Negative. Thank you. Houston. Uh, go ahead, Ben. Uh, Fred, that may be a funny in the data. The, uh, a funny in the data. Normal, and uh, we'll keep an eye on it, but uh, we don't think you should uh, worry about it too much. Let's hope not. Oh, shoot. This is a bad angle. Oh, this is going to be rough. This is Apollo Control at 104 hours, 11 minutes. Apollo 13 now, 155,111 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity is 4,399 feet per second. 
We're an hour and 18 uh, minutes away uh, from the nominal uh, mid-course burn time. Okay. As you heard Vance Brand tell the crew, this this burn is oh. insensitive. Well, the engine died. Or relatively insensitive, at least, to uh, time. And if for some reason the crew How is How much more runway do I have? <laughs> at that time, they could, at their option, slip this burn as much as 30 minutes. However, at the present time, we expect... Oh, I've run out of runway. Uh, we'll be done... Uh, oh, no, I haven't. Very close to the... There was more taxiway there. 105 hours, 30 minutes. Oh, I'm on the field now. Um, let me try and go off to the side here. Approximately 30 minutes later, at 106 hours, we still expect the... I'm trying to break. Uh, ca cars. ...disc on the supercritical helium uh, tank. Oh... Okay. ...of the lamb descent stage to go and... Uh, Where are we? Well, uh, this was exciting. I sort of went into a fence and threw a. Well, well, I think I missed. I think I curved around. I'm pretty sure I was coming. Oops. Pretty sure I was coming from that direction in, and I curved around into this and made a U-turn. But I might have killed a few cars along the way. Um. Go ahead, Chris. So where are we? I guess we'll pick it up from here next time. Uh, I don't know what's a, up with this plane. Sort of a um. Aurora State Airport. Okay. That's firm, Fred. Uh, estimated it wasn't a crash. It was a crash landing. I could walk away from it, I guess. I need to figure out how to turn off, uh, to get some fire extinguishing on this plane, apparently. And I'll look at the manual later. Um, so, K A. Oh, no, K U A O, I guess? K U A O, yeah. Okay. Change of plans. KUAO will be our starting location next time instead of Eugene, and we'll pick a safer plane to fly. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why, but normally my planes don't. Uh, I could have checked from here too. Normally my planes don't catch on fire, but this this has been one of those times. Okay, let me pause the Apollo audio right there. Well, this has been a flight. Uh, we got some mountains, we did this, and yeah, things are going just fine. Well, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.